Good morning. Welcome to Peace United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. This morning is our final Sunday in our worship series on breath. This morning, we talk about a breath of fresh air, the story of change. And isn't it something that also today, we celebrate Pentecost, the birth of the church. I want to thank again Christine Roloff for writing the words that we have been using throughout this worship series in our opening words and I'd also like to thank Reverend Al Schoen for finding wonderful words to add to our readings um, in our worship service. And now let us join together in our opening words. When I lift up my hand like this, I will invite us all to say together, breathe in, breathe out the breath of God. Will you join me? Breathe in to the story that is peace. Breathe in, breathe out the breath of God. Breathe in to the places we find comfort. Breathe in, breathe out the breath of God. Breathe out to the places and things we need to let go of. Breathe in, breathe out the breath of God. Breathe in the new life we are called to be. Breathe in, breathe out the breath of God. Breathe in the fresh breath of change. Breathe in, breathe out the breath of God. Let it be so. Now, let us sing together, gathered here. Please join me in our prayer of invocation. Gracious and loving God, we have assembled. We hear your good news. We know we are called to proclaim it. Bring to us a breath of fresh air so we too might share in this story of change. Be with us as we live out what it means to be the church. Amen. We invite everyone to join us in the word and song this morning, Every Time I Feel the Spirit.
Hear the good news. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? In our own languages we hear them speaking about the God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, People of Judah and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your children shall prophesy, and your young people shall see visions, and your elders shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And a contemporary reading from Rabbi, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. Change is not threatening so long as we keep firm hold of the values by and for which we live. We can travel with confidence so long as we have a map. We can jump with safety, knowing that there is someone to catch us as we fall. For the marvelous blend of fact, myth, poetry, and story that is in Scripture, we give thanks. Have compassion for everyone you meet, even if they don't want it. What seems conceit, cynicism, or bad manners is always a sign of things no ears have heard, no eyes have seen. You don't know what wars are going on down where the spirit meets the bone. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. The other day, I saw a nine-pound sparrow in front of my house walking down the street. So I asked the sparrow, aren't you a little heavy? The sparrow said, yeah, that's why I'm out walking, trying to get some of this weight off. And I said, why don't you fly? The sparrow looked at me like I was stupid and said, fly? I'll never, I've never flown. I could get hurt. I said, what's your name? And he said, church. When I came across this story told by Robin Myers in his book, The Underground Church Reclaiming the Subversive Way of Jesus, I began to feel uneasy, a bit anxious, and if I'm being honest, quite defensive. As hard as I tried, I could not shake the story off. Was this a fair depiction of the church, I wondered? Are we really too scared to fly? If we are, what makes us so? And perhaps the saddest realization, isn't it heartbreaking that we, the church, 
Don't do the things we were born to do, to fly. I know, I know, it's Pentecost. Shouldn't I be preaching about how wonderful the church is? Wouldn't it be better to reflect on the spirit or even the tongues of fire resting on each person? Couldn't we talk about how cool it is that these Galileans began speaking in all these different languages so people from other lands could hear and understand about God's deeds of power? Isn't there a way I could set this text down in our time and place and use it to encourage us to be more ecumenical or inspire us to do more interfaith dialogue? Couldn't we have just one day when we celebrate how wonderful the church is? I suppose we could, though I expect we actually congratulate ourselves more often than on just one day of the, of the year. I might have been tempted to do so today, except, except this week, George Floyd, a black man, was held down on a Minneapolis street with a police officer's knee on his neck while three other police officers surrounded him. Mr. Floyd was handcuffed while, his, while this knee-to-neck maneuver was used for seven minutes, and he died while crying out that he could not breathe. And all I could think about was the bird named Church, who was too scared to fly too scared to be who he was created to be because he didn't want to get hurt. You know, the early church did not agree about everything. They had different opinions about all manner of things. What they had in common was this understanding that each person was created in God's image. Each person was loved by God, was a child of God, and that their task as followers of the way of Jesus was to love each other and lo lift each other up. That God's kingdom was about doing that and, not, and was not like the Roman Empire, an empire that was fueled by greed and used its power to oppress and terrorize its people. That was it. That was all they were called to do, except, of course, for eating together, for taking, blessing, breaking, and sharing bread together, as Jesus had shown them, making sure that the stranger among them had a seat at the table and the first serving. The early church was this community made up of rich and poor, Jew and Gentile, a community trying to do a new thing, taught and lived out by Jesus. It caused them all kinds of trouble. They were considered enemies of the empire. Some were crucified. Some were brought to the Colosseum where cheering crowds and roaring lions met them in the arena. No wonder the bird named Church didn't want to fly didn't want to be who he was created to be. He knew what could happen if he lived into who he was created to be, if he flew. So what does any of this have to do with the murder of George Floyd, and I might say a multitude of other people who have suffered a similar fate? Well, if we are the church, a community who loves God and neighbor, who recognizes the value of you, each human being as a child of God, who doesn't live by greed or abuse of power, and who welcomes the stranger to the table with the first serving. Well then, where have we been? Has one sibling after another has fallen at the hands of an empire? that thrives on greed and abuse of power? And why do we claim surprise each time it happens? The only answer I can come up with is that we are too scared 
to be the church. We are frightened to be who we were created to be that day, the wind whipped into town and tongues of fire set upon each person. We're trying to play it safe, keeping the peace to avoid controversy and perhaps unwanted attention, making it so very difficult to lift our voices when we see injustice or act when systems push people to the margins or onto the ground with a knee to their neck. We're getting caught up in, with what to believe instead of how to live. After all, reciting a creed is less demanding than living intentionally as, the follow, as a follower of the way. We're saying keep politics out of the pews because it's easier to hear about our soul's salvation than our body's liberation. We are scared of getting hurt, of upsetting the apple cart, our apple cart. Scared that people might think we're out of our minds. Scared that the arena and the lions are actually not a thing of the past, but are alive and well within the structure of the American empire. We are scared to fly. And so we walk. We take the easy way, becoming more and more cumbersome and weighed down by the emptiness of rules and dogma, the trappings of societal expectations and church buildings, the minutiae of carpet color and the arguments over pews or chairs. And we lose sight of what it means to be the church. This morning, when we celebrate Pentecost, the birth of the church, I would like to invite us to breathe in the fresh breath of Holy Spirit change. I would like to, us to let go of the things that keep us tethered to the ground, resigned to being unrecognizable as the church we were created to be. I would like us to learn to fly again I'm going to end this time of worship with a challenge. It's taken in part and inspired by the book Spiritual Defiance, Building a Beloved Community of Resistance, also written by Reverend Dr. Robin Myers. Y'all should read his books. Here we go. And I'm just going to say you can, um, you can speak along with me once you get how this is all going to go. There will be no renewal of the church until we risk being subversive again for the cause of love. In a time when everything is for sale, when the common good seems like a quaint idea instead of a moral imperative, and when yet another white person kills an unarmed black man, I say, for the love of God, resist. In a land where the resident of the White House can tweet lies, instigate unrest, confound the country with obfuscation, and explicitly disregard and devalue the people of this nation, I say, for the love of God, resist. When there is action to disengage from the Paris Climate Agreement, dismantle environmental measures to save the Earth, and spout untruths about the health of this planet, I say, for the love of God, resist. When the broad classical definition of fascism, control of the government by special interest with the blessing of the Church, appears to be in play, I say, for the love of God resist. As shouts of deportation rage through a nation that espouses the Bible as sacred but disregards its mandate to care for the stranger in the land, I say for the love of God, resist. When the voice of the wealthy is heard while the cries of those people so economically vulnerable are disregarded, I say for the love of God, resist. For the misguided notion and rhetoric that claim we care about our children. When public schools languish and sports complexes rise proudly in our urban centers, subsidized by taxpayer money, 
I say, for the love of God, resist. For a society that disregards and disrespects our LGBTQI siblings, turning them away from the table, mistreating, mocking, and murdering them for who they are, I say, for the love of God, resist. When fear keeps us shackled to the ground, making it impossible for us to fly, I say, for the love of God, resist. There will be no renewal of the church until we risk being subversive again for the cause of love. We are the church. Let us be the church. Let us fly again. May it be so. We invite you to join us on our next hymn this morning, Send Down the Fire.
This is the time in our service when we offer up our prayers of joys and concerns. And if you would like to add a name to the list of people that are being remembered this morning, um, all you need to do is send Wendy an email. If she gets it by Thursday, it's included then in the next Sunday service. This morning we are praying for Ed, Bill, Summer, Shayla, Colleen and Loretta, Susan, Mary, Lacey, Linda, John, Katie, and Ellie, Paul, Julie, Gail, Marge, Karen, Tabitha, Jackie, Cindy, Stephen, Al, Joy, Mark, Kathy, Melissa, and Harriet, Shelley, Janine, Cato, and John, Larry, Nancy, Tika and Mike, Lori, Dan, Jordan, Joni, Dante and his friend and their families, Edith, Lauren, Anine, Charles, Don, Bo, Josh, Jackie, Danny, and Sue. For people who are grieving, those who are alone and lonely during these days of distancing, for people who have lost their jobs or have been furloughed, for small businesses that are struggling to stay open, for people without a place to shelter within, for the many people who care for the people who are sick, deliver our mail, ensure our grocery store shelves are not empty, and so many more people putting themselves at risk during these days of pandemic, and for this nation. Loving God, hear our prayers. And we are grateful for neighbors, friends, family, music, those who lend a hand, technology, humor, healing, poetry, and bike rides and celebration parades. Loving God, hear our prayer. And now I invite you to take a few moments in silence to pray for all of these uh, people that we have lifted up and to add any of your own that have not been spoken. Please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We want to take a bit of time in our worship service to lift up our gratitude for people, to be great, uh, to give thanksgiving for all that people are doing, even in this time of the pandemic. And so I want to list a couple of ways that we're joining uh, with God to do God's work in the world. I would really encourage you to 
um, join the Wednesday evening justice meeting. That's at 7 p.m. Uh, Zoom meeting with Bob Carr uh, leading. This will be a really good group for people to gather together to think about ways that we can respond to what's going on in this country, including Medicaid expansion concerns and um, the Clean Missouri Bill that has been changed and is going to go to vote in November. So I would just really encourage you to do that. We also have Zoom devotional meetings. Tuesday morning and Thursday morning at 9 a.m. and again Tuesday afternoon at 5. There is a Bible study that's going on Thursday afternoons at 4.30. It's on Esther. If you're interested in joining, please just give me an email and let me know that you are interested. And then when uh, Thursday at 1 p.m. is um, the Zoom meeting on poetry that lasts about a half an hour. So you're, of course, welcome to, to join that. I think that is about all that I've got about those kinds of activities. I do want to lift up um, one thing that's happening today and that you have, will have read in the news and notes, but let me remind you of it in case you didn't get that far down in the news and notes. And it's the offering for the strength in the church. It's happening today. I'm going to read to you what Bob Carr put into the news and notes. Peace UCC will join other UCC churches in collecting the Strength in the Church offering today. The offering supports the expansion of ministry and the growth of the UCC local congregations. Your support of this offering will help the UCC fulfill its commitment to creating a just world for all by investing in new ministries and practices that meet the emerging needs of local communities. As God calls, our congregation to be the church in new ways, your generosity will plant new churches, awaken new ideas in existing churches, and develop the spiritual life in our youth and young adults. This offering embodies the wisdom, together we grow stronger. So I would encourage you, if you'd like, to send a check in uh, in the memo line. Make sure that you put strength in the church so that we know where the money should be directed. I also want to give thanks for all of the generosity of this community, yet it continues even in this time of pandemic. If you're wondering how you might want to give, you can certainly continue to send your checks in the mail to the church because Jen and Darcy and I are coming in a couple of times a week to check mail. So your checks will be um, taken care of if they come in that way. Or you can donate online through our website. We'd absolutely be happy to receive any kind of offerings in that way. So thank you so very much for being the church in all of these ways. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we give thanks. We ask your blessings on these gifts of time, talent, and treasure as we use them to join your work in the world. Amen. Well, friends, this brings us to the end of our time of worship together. And as is often the case, I forgot something in the time when we were lifting up all of the things that we were involved with in the world. I want to invite people to come tonight to the Taze service. It will be available online at 7 p.m. It's a wonderful worship service that is contemplative, and, and we hope that you will uh, join us for that. And so we hope that you will also join us again next Sunday as we worship together. And now let us share the benediction together, singing the words Christopher Grundy has shared with the world. Peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you now, God's peace to you, peace behind you, peace before you, peace be all around, in Jesus Christ, go in peace.